Hello everyone and welcome back to X-Plane where I decided in honor of Neil Armstrong's birthday to try an X-15 flight and I did this during a live stream on August 5th and so the video quality is a little bit lower than usual and also I can't give you the in-game sound because I was doing other commentary during the live stream and also playing other music. Uh, you'll note that the B-52 carrying me is a little bit glitchy. I'm not entirely sure why it's shimmying like that. Uh, it's probably because of the colliders on the X-15 colliding with the B-52, but I don't have control over the B-52, it's just gonna carry me up to whatever altitude, and, what, and, and it doesn't seem to be, want to be uh, staying on the runway. I've noticed that in X-Plane, the AI aircraft have rather odd behavior, and also a rather odd selection of actual AI craft, but uh, I'll let that be. Here we go, we are at 17,000 feet, which is as high as it's going to carry me, so I release, and ignite. I am now in control, and I'm carrying a minute and 18 seconds of fuel. Uh, it started out with a minute and 12 seconds, but I dumped some of the payload weight, I guess scientific instruments, in order to carry an extra 6 seconds. And on the first flight with the X-15 I did, I was just trying it out, and I went out of control in space and didn't quite bring it back very well. Uh, I did some two landing tests with it, and this flight I wanted to go from Edwards to Las Vegas, Nellis Air Force Base. And so I had a specific goal of making a straight line flight like that. So I'm not trying for an altitude record here. The highest altitude I got was on my third flight, I think I got 275,000 feet with this setup, this, this amount of fuel. But this time I'm going to actually try and make a destination here. And so you can see me turning towards Las Vegas. I didn't have control over the B-52, so I couldn't get it to turn for me uh, in the right direction. That would have been easier. Also, it's hard to get back to Edwards Air Force Base because the B-52... You know, the B-52, I think, is supposed to actually turn around and point us to Nellis Air Force Base... Uh, not Nellis, sorry. Edwards Air Force Base before releasing the X-15 so the X-15 can come back. That would be handier. Trying to do a flip... It does have RCS thrusters, uh, uh, you have to parent it to certain keys, but it does have RCS thrusters on it, so it can maneuver in space, but it's not very good at it. So yeah, it's better to just have us pointed in the right direction. So here I am, checking the map, making sure that I am going roughly where I want to go. So can I make it from, X, uh, from Edwards Air Force Base? to Nellis Air Force Base in an X-15. We are completely in glide mode now, nothing else. Now, you'll note that on landing you're supposed to release the bottom vertical stabilizer. I hadn't quite figured out how to do that yet. So, yeah. Um, hopefully, once I learn how to do that, uh, this will be a lot smoother, but obviously it's not a normal flight sim key. I don't know if it's something you have to toggle in the cockpit or whether it's just something I have to assign and just haven't figured out where it is in the menus yet. I am going to present the entire flight because it's not that long and it also may be interesting to see how it handles. Now you might wonder why I'm not in first person view, it would be a lot more, I mean, authentic I guess in first person view. We aren't doing sightseeing, that wasn't the purpose of this. Um, the reason I'm not in first person view is because it kept blacking me out, but as soon as you go into the outside view and come back in, it's restored and it starts slowly back blacking out again, even when it's in level flight not pulling g-forces. Which is weird. I mean, and even at lower velocities below the speed of sound. So low velocity, below the speed of sound, level flight, not pulling g-forces, it still started blacking me out, so I felt like there was something wrong there. So I couldn't go into the in-cockpit view because I... Of course, there were legitimate circumstances where I would black out, and I learned to try and avoid those. G-force limits are on, so if I pull too many Gs, the structure will overstress. So that is a thing. And so I'll try and keep my movements careful, but it is a little bit jerky sometimes. The X-15, of course, has all moving surfaces on the tail. The horizontal stabilizers move entirely. That's, of course, handy and necessary for the thinner part of the atmosphere, but uh, produces more severe reactions in the thicker part of the atmosphere. As far as gliding goes, the X-15 did a whole lot better than I expected. It, uh, it performs quite well on that, despite the short wings. 
It is not as heavily laden, especially when it's out of fuel. It's not as heavily laden as uh, F-104, for instance, uh, which also has sort of a similar wing profile, and it has more of a lifting body than the F-104. So overall, I think it flies better. It's not quite as much of a flying brick as that particular plane. And I, I think it's uh, pretty comparable to the Space Shuttle, at least um, in my KSP flying of the Space Shuttle it is. I have not yet done approach and landing tests with the Space Shuttle, so I will get to experience that and explain and see how it does here. But actually, the gliding for the X-15 is comparable to the gliding that I felt with the Space Shuttle, which is interesting, in the KSP with the CSS Shuttle. The Space Shuttle, of course, has a much bigger wing, but also is carrying a lot more mass. I'll have to check whether the X-15 and the Space Shuttle actually are supposed to have similar gliding characteristics. I suspect that that's not the case. Okay, so here we are approaching uh, Las Vegas. Initially I thought I was going to undershoot and I couldn't see Las Vegas, but then I spotted the train there and uh, it was looking good. In this direction we were very well lined up with Nellis Air Force Base. Actually, uh, the flight between Edwards and Ellis is a pretty interesting and good flight if you want to do some experimental air aircraft testing. That's a nice flight to do. There's also an optional detour to the Grand Canyon if you happen to have the fuel. We did not have that with the X-15, unfortunately. We'll see. I wonder if you can put those external tanks that the X-15 uh, later carried on this one. It'd be nice to have some more fuel on. I'll have to check that. Now unfortunately, thanks to my previous flights at Cape Canaveral and Baikonur, I had turned off the autogen buildings and trees and such. So all we've got at Las Vegas is the photo scenery and uh, none of the 3D scenery, which is a shame because otherwise we would have had uh, 3D buildings and uh, cars driving by and everything and it'd make a lot more sense. Uh, right now it'll just be flat photo scenery. On the bright side, that provides better performance with a fast plane like the X-15 so that we don't have low frame rates. With all, the fo uh, with all the 3D scenery, we would have probably lower frame rates than we would like, especially on landing. You can see my altitude, speed, and uh, fuel information in the upper left-hand corner. Of course, no fuel right now, but uh, just to give you an idea of the, how the flight is going, it's up there. The top line is the velocities, and the second line is the altitude stuff, and coordinate stuff. You can see uh, Nellis Air Force Base in front there, and how well lined up we are. Passing over Las Vegas Strip, if we had the, all the scenery objects, I bet we would see some casino sort of stuff around here. Tough to tell with the with the photo scenery where exactly the different I mean the buildings look fairly similar from from just the top view they're much more distinctive in their profiles okay well here's a tense part after coming all this way can I land it safely again sorry for having the bottom vertical stabilizer bit that's supposed to actually decouple uh, that will cause problems because the landing skids don't extend below it. Uh, they're a little bit shorter than that. But we'll do what we can. I forgot to check whether there was a deployable parachute, a drag chute on this. I don't think so. We do have air brakes on the tail, which you'll see me open. I would really like to have been in the cockpit view right now, but that view also has the divider which somewhat obscures my runway view. And also, uh, we will go into the cockpit view for landing, don't worry. But you'll see the blacking out issue that I had. Now at this attitude and uh, this speed, we should not be having like g-force effects and blacking out, but you'll still see it happen. Anyway, 
I used the air brakes briefly there to slow down. They are very powerful. I'm surprised by how powerful they are. I suspect they probably shouldn't have been that powerful. Okay, then we've got the skids out and the front nose gear. And this is the view from the cockpit. Note, it starts to dim. Yeah, and that's why I'm, I'm not tending towards that view. But every time you go outside and go back in, it stops dimming. It starts back to the normal contrast and brightness. Okay. Not quite lined up with the runway. I'm a little bit to the right. But uh, with a little bit more practice, perhaps we can do more flights with the X-15 and get a little bit better. This is an Edwards Lake bed after all. That, you could pretty much land anywhere. Yeah, the dimming. Really annoying. Okay, it's getting it's getting probably mainly because I've got that vertical stabilizer bit still on. And here goes stylish skid into the parking slot. Yes, this was entirely an intentional maneuver, sure. Exactly what I wanted to do. Alright, and with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.